Market PC Wabash. I was down at Machicomo State Park sitting in the gazebo chilling. And I don't normally put stuff like this on video, but God was having a conversation. He said, I want you to say something on this platform that might help somebody. And then yesterday, the same thing happened when I was going to the range getting ready for the cowboy action match coming up. So, when I came home, got my Bible out. And people that know me know that the wheat and pears is where I like to go. First, I'm going to start off, you know, see all this stuff on Facebook with the kids flipping people off and everything else doing all these protests. Well, that is not how you're supposed to raise your children. In Proverbs 22, it says, train up a child in the way they should go and when they're not old and when they're old they will not depart that's Proverbs 22 6 all right now background little testimonial when I was a kid and I went to church all the time so I was raised up in the way I should go parents did a good job they stayed together and they're still together But I had a lot of perceived pressure back then. So I went forward when I was a kid to shut people up. And it worked. So that's what I would say. Faking it. You can't fake it till you make it. That was just faking it. It got people off my back. So I was just. Ask yourself, is there anybody out there that was in the same boat I was? Just trying to make people happy. Not doing things for the right reason. And then... Let's see, not doing things for the right reason. Not doing things because you're supposed to do them, but just to shut people up. How many people that are Christians is going to say, I think I'm going to go to heaven. Well, let me tell you something. There's a difference between thinking you're going to heaven and knowing you're going to heaven. Because in the church, there are people there to put on the show, come to church on Sunday, live like the devil for the six other days of the week. And this is where I believe the parable of the wheat and the tares come in. Now, let's see. So let's go to Matthew 13, 24. And the reason I'm doing it from talking, I'm out in the garden sitting in my chair because this, is directed towards people that go to church all the time and people that might need to hear this and I'm not going to sugarcoat it I ain't going to tickle your ears I'm just going to shoot it to you the way the Bible shoots it to you straight that's why I'm in my garden because this message is the garden pertains to the garden of the church so and I got the King James Version Bible. And I'm going to read Matthew 24 through 30. And another parable he put forth unto them, saying, Now this is Jesus talking. The kingdom of heaven 
is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. I sowed good seed. Everything came up. But when a blade, when a blade, which was a weed, sprung up and brought, oh, when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, which my corn sprung up and brought forth fruit. But at the base of that plant, there were also tares and tears over the potatoes. The tear is a weed in this past. So the servant of the house, so the servants of the household came to him saying, Sir, did not thou sow good seed in the field? From which hath the tares or the weed? He said unto them, The enemy has done this. Well, the enemy is the devil. You plant good seed in your garden. And the weeds are going to try to take over. Same thing in the church. You've got the true believers that are there. But there are also people that are putting on the show. That do the good job. That fake it. But they're the tares. And the seeds are the good seeds. So you got the wheat and the tares in the same room and it's called the church and let's see 28 he said unto them the enemy let me wait for the and then the enemy has done this and then the servant said wilt thou then we go and gather them up but he said nay because if you gather them up you will also uproot the wheat with them. So he's going to let the weeds and the tares grow together. So you don't destroy one over the other. So if I plant a little tomato plant out here and I start weeding around it, I could pull that tomato plant up. So same thing applies in this passage. You got the true believer in the church, but you got the the weed in the church too so you don't worry about gathering them up you don't worry about sorting them out you just let it grow together he said nay because you might uproot the wheat with them let both grow together in 30 just what I said let both grow together and in time of the harvest I will say to the reapers gather ye together first the tares that's the weeds and bind them in bundles to burn, but gather the wheat unto my barn. Okay, there you go. So when, in the end, he's not worried about the wheat growing. When it's time is over and judgment comes, he's going to separate the wheat from the tares. One is going to the house. The other is getting burned in hell. And that's the simple fact of it. It's like my corn came up, but if you can see behind me, what is that? That's the bundles. That corn right there is just the stalk. The corn has been gathered. It's in the house. Those will eventually be thrown out, and that's what it says here let them grow together harvest the good burn the rest now I love the wheat and carrots because it's just that's the way it's going to be we might all be in the same room growing together true believers and people that think they're going to heaven well it's I'd rather know I'm going to heaven than thinking because thinking ain't good enough. And then I said, I think I want to look at something else real quick. And that was the thief on the cross. That's in Luke. Luke. 
39 through 43. Now, Jesus is on the cross at this point. And in 39, one of the malefactors, these are the two thieves that was on the cross on each side. One of the malefactors which would hang riled on him saying, If thou be the cross, save yourself. If thou be the Christ, save yourself. But the other answered and rebuked the other thief. Dost thou now, dost, dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed, the thief on the cross, knew he did what he did and he was had this punishment coming and we indeed justly for we received the due reward of our deeds we were bad we're getting what we deserve but this man has done nothing amiss he knew Christ didn't do nothing wrong and he said unto Jesus this is the thief that knew Christ did nothing wrong he said remember me when thou comest in your kingdom and Jesus said, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. That the thief knew who he was dying, getting hung next to. He said, Remember me in your father's house. And Jesus said, No problem, you'll be with me in paradise. But see, that's the difference. The thief on the cross knew what he did. He knew he was going to die. But he also knew who was next to him. And accepted Jesus right there. He's in paradise. The same day. With Jesus. But how many of us know when it's our time to go. We could get in a car and drive down the street and get killed by somebody texting and driving. We didn't know that was in store for us today. That's where the thief had the advantage, but he also knew who was next to him. You don't know when your time is up. And if you're not right, you're going to be like the other passage in the wheat and the tares. You're just going to be bundled up and burned and disposed of at a later time. So, do you know you're a Christian and saved by his blood? Or do you think you're a Christian just because you go to church on Sunday and you're a good person? Heck, I was a good person. But like I said, at that point in time, if I died before, I'd be burned up too. But, now I know I'm right. And I'll be gathered unto the house when that time comes. Well, the wheat and the tares is for the people putting on the show. You're either going to be a wheat or you're going to be a tear. What are you really? So, you might need to evaluate that situation. Some people. Like I said, I was a tear or a weed, but I was in church every Sunday. But it wouldn't have meant nothing in the end if I had died before. But now I'm good. Alright, this is Mark's PC Bobach. I'm out.